and if we look closer here you can see a bunch of feathers on the ground where something happened what's up lazy dog fam hope all y'all are having a wonderful day it is friday october 27th here in south georgia and on today's video i want to give you an update on some of our soil building exercises we have going on I'm going to talk about this plot behind me where we just put the girls on here to graze got some really good stuff going on here and then we're going to transition to a couple plots where things didn't quite go as planned and we'll tell you how we're going to adjust with those plots going forward now before we talk about what we've got going on in this plot, a little bit of sad news. We're down to three girls now, whereas we had five just a week or so ago. So when we built that chicken tractor over two years ago, we started out with six hens in there. And then about a year or so ago, one of them got injured and died while I was moving the chicken tractor. And then about a week ago, we lost two more and completely my fault. I should have known better. So before they got to where they are now, I was letting the girls help me clean up the sweet potato plot a little bit so I don't have as much to rake out of here by hand. And we started them on the outside edge of this plot where it's relatively flat. They did a great job. But then I sat them on top of this sweet potato hill here and we're working them down that way and that's where I messed up. So this chicken trailer I built is pretty heavy. It's not hard to move with that little chick lift jack on the back of it, but it's pretty heavy. And when it's sitting on flat ground, nothing can really get underneath there. But when we're not on flat ground, like on top of this sweet potato hill, there's a little bit of exposed space underneath the bottom. And if we look closer here, you can see a bunch of feathers on the ground where something happened. So I don't know what it was, could have been a possum, could have been a raccoon. We just came out here one day and one of the chickens was completely gone. Another one was dead inside the chicken tractor, had to get it out of there. So hard lesson learned there. Don't even try to put this thing on uneven ground anymore. Always keep it on flat ground. So after that happened, I immediately moved the chicken tractor out here onto the grass where it's nice and flat. Left them there about a week because I was waiting on this cover crop to get nice and established before we put them on there. So my general rule of thumb is to wait until we've got complete ground coverage before we start grazing these cover crops. I don't want to be able to see a speck of soil looking down into that cover crop. So once we've got that, I feel pretty good about grazing it. And with this particular mix and the different components we have, it should regrow fine, even though it's not that tall right now. So let's take a little closer gander into what we've got here with this mix we made. We mixed four different things with this particular cool season cocktail. We've got the rapeseed here. That's what kind of looks like greens. The chickens really, really love that stuff. Then we've got our winter peas here. We can see some of that vetch right there, smaller leaves on it. And then down here below everything, kind of in the understory of this mix, We've got that Bonanza clover coming along. You can't really see that now, but it's down in there. And so what should happen here, if everything goes to plan based on our previous experiences with these cool season cover crops, as the chickens are making their first round on this plot, they'll tear up that kale, they'll tear up the peas, they'll tear up that vetch pretty good. And then that will allow the clover to start thriving. And the clover will start thriving and they'll end up eating more clover on the second round. Some of that other stuff will grow back a little bit, but it's almost like we have a succession going on after that first round of grazing. So they were put on the spot just yesterday afternoon and even though we're down to only three hens, you can see they've worn it out pretty good. They absolutely love this stuff. So let's go ahead and make our daily move real quick and then we can see their grazing job a little bit better. All right, so we got them moved. They're happy again. And now we can see this comparison a lot better. So we can see the difference between what hasn't been grazed and what has been grazed. Those three chickens did a number on this spot in less than 24 hours, but not enough of a number where it won't grow back. So it still looks pretty good. Still got pretty good ground coverage there. So this should rebound nicely for a second round of grazing once they make it all the way to the other side. 
So with the exception of being down a couple chickens, everything is going as planned in that plot. Like I said, we'll do two rounds of grazing. As soon as these field peas are done behind me, we'll plant the same mix in this plot. They'll then go to this plot. They'll spend most of December and January in this plot. And so that gives us a nice long-term plan for the girls. Now, let me show you a couple examples of when things don't go as planned. So in this big plot, right behind that plot we were just at, about a month and a half ago we planted a nice dense cover crop of white millet and it germinated well, looked really nice in the beginning and our original plan was just let this grow and get killed by the first frost but as you can see that plan has changed. So what happened was that millet grew to about 6, 8, 10 inches tall and then all of a sudden started going to seed. And you can see that right here. See, it didn't get very tall at all before it started putting on seeds. Now, there's two possible explanations for what happened here. One, we haven't had any significant rainfall in a long, long time. Now, I did water it some, but maybe I just wasn't able to keep it happy. It got stressed and went to seed. And the second explanation could be that this white millet just doesn't do what we wanted it to do. In the past, we planted pearl millet, and that seems to hang on a lot longer before going to seed. I should have got pearl millet, but I decided to be cheap and just got the cheapest millet they had on Green Cover Seeds website, which was this white millet. And I don't think I'll be planting this white millet anymore. So because it was all going to seed, we had to terminate it. Millet can quickly become a weed if you're not careful. I made one pass with the tiller here. But as you can see, it didn't do that great of a job, probably because it's so dry. I think I'm going to need to water this down good and try to till it one more time to get it all incorporated. So once I get that cultivated a little better, I'll transition from that failed warm season cover crop to some cool season cover crops. I've still got plenty of vetch, peas, clover, and rapeseed in my fridge in the barn here. I'll make me another mix. Probably won't be quite as rapeseed heavy on this plot since we're not going to graze it. May go a little heavier with the peas and the vetch with our little cocktail that we make for this one. So whereas I was about 90% certain that millet was going to make it to the first frost without going to seed, with this cover crop right here, I was just kind of hopeful it would make it without going to seed because this was planted a lot sooner than that millet was. But as you can see here, this is suffering from the dry weather. I just got tired of watering this all the time. It hung on for a while, but now this sorghum here is going to seed. And in hindsight, I probably planted the sorghum a little too thick with this cocktail. The goal was for the red ripper peas and the sunflowers to grow up through the sorghum. But as you can see, that didn't really happen because the sorghum was planted so thick. Those sunflowers never got very big. Those peas never got very big. Now, unlike that millet where it was going to seed across the entire plot and we had to act pretty quick, some of this sorghum's going to seed, but a lot of it hasn't gotten there yet. So let me show you what we do in these cases. We can kind of kick the can down the road a little bit. We don't need to terminate this completely. We are going to chop it down. So I'm going to grab the mower, put it on its highest setting, and we're just going to chop and drop all this stuff. That should give us a little longer lifespan out of this warm season cover crop, and it should also help with our weed suppression efforts by dropping all this nice organic matter onto that soil there. All right, so that allows us to kind of kick the can down the road a little bit, so to speak. Yes, that sorghum will eventually go to seed again. But in the meantime, we won't have to worry about any winter weeds thriving because we've got that nice mat on the soil now. Let's just take advantage of all that biomass that this cover crop produced. Now that this is cut, I probably will give it some water tonight. That way we can encourage some new growth on those stalks there, get even more biomass out of this cover crop. We do probably eventually need to put a cool season cover crop here, but we don't have to do it yet because we have kicked the can down the road. 
So I hope you enjoyed seeing those three different cover crop scenarios at play there. As I've told you in the past, there's really no right or wrong way to do all this. It just depends on your particular situation and sometimes the equipment that you have. Also depends on how long you've got before you need to plant some more vegetables in a certain plot. Or it may depend on how much warm weather you have left. A lot of times we can plant cool season cover crops anytime throughout the winter down here because we get these random spells of warm weather we can get things to germinate pretty well your situation may be different it's just all about being flexible and adapting as things change and as always you can find our affiliate links and coupon codes in the description below also go check out our website lazydogfarm.com and if you want to see how we transition one of these plots from cover crops grazing with chickens to ready to plant vegetables watch this video right here we'll walk you through the entire process of how we do it so check that out and we'll see you next time right here at lazy dog farm